Hey everybody, welcome to Crack a Pack Tuesday number 74 on the Manalik. I'm John as always, and it's Kaladesh time. We had Kaladesh pre-release this weekend. I want a bunch of packs, and so we're gonna start Crack a Pack Tuesday off with Kaladesh. For the next 16 weeks, we're gonna crack this open, see what's in it, and talk about what we would take pack one, pick one, if this was a draft. Up first, we have Aviary Mechanic. Aviary Mechanic is one and a white for a creature, dwarf artificer at common. to 2 2, and when Aviary Mechanic enters the battlefield, you may return another permanent you control to its owner's hand. Very solid card. I'd play this 100% of the time because it is a 2 2 for 2 with pure upside. You don't have to use the effect if there's no reason to or no upside of it, but getting extra ETB effects or anything like that, or, or even getting a, a, a land sort of redropped and untapped if you're missing a land drop or something like that. Uh, very solid. Never a first pick. There's no pack that I can imagine. I mean, I can imagine some bad packs, but no pack where I can imagine actually first picking that. Up next is Vidalcan Blademaster. Vidalcan Blademaster is two and a blue for a creature. Vidalcan sh Soldier. That common. It's 2-3. It has prowess. That's it. It's fine. It's not ingenious scab. It's slightly worse because it doesn't have the pump ability. Um, it's fine. Again, I'd play it probably 100% of the time that I'm in blue, but it's a late mid-pack pickup. It's never a first pick. Up next is Night Market Lookout. Night Market Lookout is a single black for a creature human rogue. It's a 1-1, and whenever Night Market Lookout becomes tapped, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Yeah, you can do some cute things like using this to crew a vehicle. Even if you don't attack or block with that vehicle, you can still crew it. Um, but still... This is just not a good card. I did use it to some good effect in the sealed event in the pre in the pre-release, but in draft and you know once people really kind of start to know the format, I don't think you should ever play this card, and certainly not a first pick. Up next is takedown. Takedown is a single green for a sorcery. Choose one target or sorry, takedown deals four damage to target creature with flying, or takedown deals one damage to each creature with flying. Pure sideboard card, you should never main deck this. There's not enough flyers in this format that you can just assume that you are always going to face one. But if you see one in game one, side it in in game two. But it's a very, very late pick. Up next is Impeccable Timing. Impeccable Timing is one and a white for an instant at common. Impeccable Timing deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Very, very solid. Obviously, it doesn't kill everything. It doesn't kill X4s, but it does kill X3s really, really well. The fact that it's attacking or blocking means that it's still conditional, but way less conditional than some other removal we've seen. Uh, my favorite use of this was killing Renegade Freighters, the 4-3 that attacks as a 5-4, having them crew it up and then turn it sideways, and then me saying, ah, 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 before the plus one, plus one trigger resolves, I'm going to deal three. This is a first pickable card. It's not the best removal by far, but in a weaker pack, it could be first pickable. Our pack's still going to be weak for a little bit. Fireforger's Puzzle Knot is up next. Two generic mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to our creature or player. Pay two and a red, sacrifice it to do that again. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. If you find yourself up against a lot of X1s, and I don't mean 1-1s, if you see a bunch of 2-1s or 3-1s and you think you can get some value out of this, sure. But if you're putting this in just to kill a servo, eh, you're wasting a card slot. Not a first pick. And barely playable, if ever. Up next is Curio Vendor. Curio Vendor is one and a blue for a creature of Vidalcan. Nothing else. It has no class. And it's a 2-1. And that's it. This is, uh, you know, this is, I'm desperate for a creature playable. And that is it. Generally, you should not be playing this and you should never be actually spending a real pick on Curio Vendor. Up next is a real pick, Chandra's Pyrohelix. One in a red for an instant, Chandra's Pyrohelix deals two damage, dis uh, divided as you choose, among one or two target creatures and or players. The versatility on this is fantastic. You can kill an X1 and ping your opponent. You can kill two X1s. You can kill an X2. You can finish off things in combat because it's instant speed. So many things you can do with this. This is a functional reprint of Twin Bolt from uh, Dragons. And yeah, it's 100% first pickable. Again, not unconditional removal because it only kills a very specific class of things but the versatility is fantastic up next is cog workers puzzle knot cog workers puzzle knot is two generic mana for an artifact when it enters the battlefield you get a servo pay one and a white sacrifice it to get another servo this is probably the best puzzle knot and i still would relatively rarely play it uh certainly not a first pick just 
Puzzle Knots are so weak. Up next is the Renegade Freighter that I was just talking about. Three generic mana for an artifact vehicle. It's a 4-3 when it's on. And when it attacks, it gets plus one, plus one, and gains trample until end of turn. It has trample. Wow, I forgot that was even a thing. I usually just killed them so fast with my impeccable timings. Uh, crew 2, which of course is the fantastic crew number. Crew 2 is easy. It's fine. You can almost always turn it on. Crew 3 and above. Pretty hard to pull off. Renegade Freighter, I think, is probably first pickable. It's nice that it goes in basically every single deck, and it just attacks like a beast. Really solid vehicle. I think I maybe even like it more than the Sky Skiff when we're talking about common vehicles. Uh, I would, at least for the moment, consider it to be a first pickable card. Our first uncommon is Whirler Virtuoso. Whirler Virtuoso is one blue red for a creature of a Dulcan Artificer. It's a 2 3. When it enters the battlefield, you get 3 energy. Pay 3 energy, create a 1 1 colorless Thopter cre- artifact creature token with flying. Very solid card. I don't know that I'd ever first pick it. I don't know that I would commit myself to blue red right away, right out of the gate with pack one, pick one. If I was in blue and thinking about red, I'd probably take it. Same thing for red thinking about blue. And obviously, if if I'm in blue, red kind of impact two, pack three. Yeah, I'm snatching this. It's a really good card. I just don't think I'd ever first pick it. Up next is Experimental Aviator. Experimental Aviator is three blue, blue for a creature of a Dulcan Art... Or, sorry, human artificer. It's an O3. It has flying. And when it enters the battlefield, you get two 1-1 Thopters with flying. Solid card. Totally fine. Uh, The 03 is a a decent enough blocker, and you get two flyers out of it. The five mana hurts a little bit. You know, that's a lot of mana to just be getting a couple of 1-1 attackers. But, you know, it's still okay. I I haven't played with it. I haven't played against it. I don't know if it's first pickable. I'm inclined to say that it's not. And based on the cards that we currently have in frame that we're thinking about, I'm going to say it's not first pickable in this pack. Our final on common is Consulate Surveillance. Three and a white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you get four energy. You do pay four mana for it, though. Pay two energy. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you this turn by a single source of your choice. Creature or player or spell, whatever you want. Uh, this is just bad. There are way better ways of getting energy, and you really don't want to be spending energy on a single target fog. That's 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 no. Just no. Don't first pick it. Don't last pick it if you can. Don't play it. Our final card, our rare, is a Dynavolt Tower. Three generic mana for an artifact. Whenever uh, you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you get two energy. Pay five energy to deal three damage to a creature or player. This is just way too hard to go off with. Um, I would like to give it a try at some point in draft, but I feel like the blue-red spells deck doesn't really exist except at rare and mythic with metallurgic summonings in this. Uh, so I just don't think there's a, I don't think there's a huge payoff. I think this is really meant for kind of constructed to build like a casual instance and sorceries matters deck. So I'm not going to first pick a Dynavolt tower or really ever play it. So I'm really between the freighter, the pyro helix and the impeccable timing to begin with. And I think I'm just going to go with the pyro helix. It deals one less damage than the impeccable timing does, but I can do it whenever I want to whatever I want. Plus to my opponent's face, uh, just seems really good. I definitely wouldn't fault anybody for taking the freighter or the timing, though, but I am going for the Pyrohelix. Let me know what you would have taken out of this pack. Would it have been the Pyrohelix, the freighter, the timing? Are you all in on the tower? Let me know in the comments down below in the little poll in the top right-hand corner. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash TheManaLeak, Twitch.tv slash TheManaLeak. And if you want to throw some support my way, you can find me at Patreon.com slash TheManaLeak. You found me here on YouTube. Make use of that comment section. Click that thumbs up icon if you like the content and click subscribe if you haven't and want to see more. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you all tomorrow for Wacky Wednesday.